If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this. People, what are your scariest encounters with paranormal beings, shadows, demons, or even gnomes, elves, etc., in your house that gave you chills? I have a lot of stories, I thought I'd start off with a more light-hearted one. This took place through the 1990s. I would frequent my aunt's house, where my cousins lived, and she told me that if I saw gnomes, I should not be afraid, they're just mischievous little guys. I was confused and slightly afraid by her just coming out and saying that, but a few hours later, I realized why. I kept seeing very short people with beards and pointy hats running around the corners. I saw one scurry down the staircase, run around my aunt's room, and around the kitchen corner as well. The sightings were mere seconds as they were definitely just messing with everyone in the house and didn't really want to be caught. My sister saw one sitting on the kitchen countertop, he was staring straight ahead, not moving, probably trying not to be seen, still as a statue. It was so bizarre. Some mornings, my aunt said she would wake up and some furniture would be moved like they had pushed it around in the night. So strange. I think it had to do with my uncle's strong German heritage. I read that gnomes are from the old land, and I think his strong family ties may have something to do with their presupposition. Either way, it was always an interesting experience to visit. If anyone has any gnome experiences or knowledge, I would love to hear. The first time I went to Mexico with my now husband, we stayed at his parents' house. It was me and him in one room and our nephew and his girlfriend in the other, we all stayed upstairs. We heard it as if someone came and banged on the front door several times. Me being who I am, I got up and told my husband to come downstairs with me so I could open the door. As I opened the door, there was no one there, and the way the house is, we would not be able to see anyone who ran away or tried to hide. The house is surrounded by a tall fence with a lock, you have to enter the fence first before knocking on the door, no way someone could just ding dong ditch. We went back upstairs, and as we layered down, we started to hear sounds downstairs, as if someone had come in, walked to the room on the first floor, and laid down, but no one else was there. Then we heard taps on our window from the outside. The next morning I told his mom, and she told me his grandpa used to get very drunk and slam on the front door, they would open it, then drunkenly walk to his room downstairs and pass out on the bed. She said it was him who opened the door, and he had walked in as if they would open it for him when he was alive. I grew up in a heavily haunted home, and I've got stories, lots of stories. But my oldest would wake me in the middle of the night at least three to four times a week. Telling me the man's cologne or yucky cigar smoke would wake him. No man lived in the home at the time. When he went to his dad's for the weekend, his toy would light up and play music until I said at the top of my voice, C is okay, he is at his dad's and will be back Sunday, and it wouldn't make another sound. When C was a toddler, he would stand in the living room and giggle, talk, and wave to the attic door in the corner of the room on the ceiling. Tell me, man is funny, mama. I've got tons more of when me and my siblings were small kids and my oldest son, while my twins have never done anything remotely like C. From when I was born until I was around 13 years old, my family and I lived in a very old three-flat apartment building. As far back as I can remember, I was always creeped out by the long hallway that led to the back of the unit, as well as my parents' bedroom, but I could never explain why. One night, when I was around five or six years old, I was sleeping in my parents' bedroom with both of my parents, as I was scared of a big thunderstorm that was happening. All of a sudden, I woke up, and my eyes were immediately glued to the closet door at the foot of the bed. A tall, translucent woman stood there, back facing me, with long hair running down her back. As I stared, she slowly began to turn to face me. Realizing what was happening, I dove under the covers and shut my eyes. When I opened my eyes again, it was morning, and the woman was gone. I never told my family about it, and to this day, I still have no explanation for it. So at the time when this happened, I was probably about 16 years old. I used to stay up playing games at night with my buddies, which, if I got too loud, would warrant a late night visit from my mom, who would tell me to keep it down. It was late one night, and all the lights in the house were off. My bedroom door was cracked, and looking into the hallway, it was just pitch black. So, out of the corner of my eye, I swear, I see what I thought was my mom with her head barely in the gap between the door and the doorframe. It looked like she was yelling at me, or at least seemed upset, but I couldn't hear her since I was wearing my headphones. So I take my headphones off and go, what? And I just stare into the pitch black before I realize that my mom is definitely not there and is not yelling at me. That house used to give me weird vibes, and I absolutely hated my sister's room growing up. Once she left for college, I kept her door closed at all times. I ended up telling my family about it years later, and apparently my sister and mom had a few weird experiences in that house as well. 
That was my first and only, what I believe was, paranormal experience I've ever had. A few years ago, I was awake and lying in bed. It was a quiet Sunday morning. I'm usually the first one awake in my house on the weekend. I'm married and have three kids. I remember this so vividly and clearly because we were in the middle of painting our bedroom and had the curtains off, and the room was blindingly bright. I was awake in bed for about 10 minutes, just laying there with my wife, thinking of the day ahead, when I heard someone coming up the stairs. Our home is 120 years old and has creaky original flooring. I've heard this sound hundreds of times from my room. Typical layout at the top of the stairs, one main hall with all our bedroom doors branching off, mine being the last one at the end of the hall. I can tell which door in the hall someone is walking to with my eyes closed, and I certainly know if someone is coming to mine because I'm the last door. Oftentimes, my children go downstairs for water early, and I assumed this was the case. I heard the steps coming up the stairs, and once they reached the top, I could tell they were coming to my room, so laying still, I turned my head to greet what I thought was one of my kids. What happened next is burned in my memory forever. A small head peered around the doorframe and looked directly at me. Maybe three and a half feet from the floor. All I see is what looks like a boy with almost black hair, a disheveled bowl cut, white skin, and black, rough cut holes for eyes. We were both startled, and it immediately dashed away. To this day, I don't know what launched me forward. My instinct was to either convince myself that I just saw and caught this thing or find out it was one of my kids and I was hallucinating. It was literally a second and a half between the time I saw it and me leaping to the doorway and looking into the hall. The thing just vanished. I went into my daughter's rooms one by one, and they were all very much asleep. I searched the house from basement to attic, but nothing. This house has many stories I could share here, but this one was unlike anything I or my family have ever experienced. I have twin girls. The way their bedroom used to be set out was with a bed on either side of the room and enough room to fit an armchair in between them. I used to feel uncomfortable going into their room, like I was expecting something other than them to be there. Anyway, one day one of them told me they didn't like it when the old lady sat in the chair. I asked her to describe the old lady to me, and then I asked if her sister had seen her too. She said she didn't know, so I went and spoke to her sister well out of earshot a while later. She described the exact same old lady, now I know kids play tricks and stuff. But if you know your kids, you know when they're telling the truth. This wasn't a game to them they fully believed what they were saying. I'm sure they were four at the time, and it went on for a little while on and off. Then one day they stopped mentioning it, and the feeling I used to get also went away. I had a night terror about 10 years ago, which, unknown to me at the time, was known as Old Hag Syndrome. At that point, I was totally convinced I had seen a ghost, and it stuck with me, so as soon as they said it was an old lady. My stomach dropped. Bit of a backstory. In 2007, my grandma died in the house. In 2020, my dad died in the house. But before them, there was always something in this house, though they were the only two deaths. Weird stuff started happening after Pop's death, so after five months we got our house blessed, which after a month made it, shadows, noises, eerie, and sometimes dreadful feelings, worse. Time goes by, and here we are three days ago, when I went to a reading and the guy started saying, shit, only my dad knows. Say duck it, go against my better judgment, and get a puck device. Weird ass static comes from it, a scary groan and what sounded like a hiss are the only things that come out. But here's where shit goes south, and I'm pretty sure it's still going south. Shadows are more formed now, everyone is starting to see them. The dreadful feeling is now accompanied by severe anxiety and tension. Footsteps are louder, and doors are opening and closing in front of us instead of when we are in a different room. I'm probably going to contact a shaman to see what they say since this is Native American land that was indeed cursed since the tribe was very peaceful and was killed off. Also, there is a history of curses in this valley. Here's to hoping I didn't utterly duck myself. Because that shadow I see out of the corner of my eye keeps me awake. My brother has had episodes of sleep paralysis since he was a kid, sometimes sleepwalking. As a result, he often behaves strangely for a few days after a particularly vivid terror. We adjusted to this, so when he stopped sleeping in his room in the, finished and totally non-threatening, basement and moved into the room above it, we understood. He said he'd been seeing something slowly walking back and forth across the end of his hallway for a few weeks, and he just needed some time to work through it. So, one night I had a particularly vivid dream about a creepy monster wandering around my house. I got the feeling that it was looking for something or someone, and I was instinctively afraid of it. Normally, my dreams are very abstract, but in this case, my house was laid out exactly as it was in real life. Every detail in place. It was extremely real. 
The presence in my dream was tall and made up of shades of white and gray, with broad shoulders, a very narrow rib cage, and long, clubbed arms that hung down past the knees and ended in very tiny fingers. I don't remember its legs, but I remember its arms and face very clearly. The face was the worst part. It was pale, smooth, and nearly featureless, but it had deep, dark impressions where eyes should go. The mouth was a small slit where the chin would be, and that was it. It had hair as well, gray ropes that reminded me of dreadlocks, but very sparse. This dream was so incredibly disturbing to me that I immediately went to talk to my brother about it. I figured he would have some advice for me, being so accustomed to bad dreams himself. Not even halfway through my description of what I saw, my brother burst into hysterical tears and started shaking. He's not usually so emotional. I asked him why he was so upset and waited for him to calm down. I had described exactly the thing that he had been seeing in the basement, the thing that had scared him into moving upstairs. After that day, he never saw it again. We never talked about this experience after that, partially because it still upsets us both eight years later, but to this day I can't explain how we saw the same creature. It was unlike anything I'd seen before that night or since. The first thing happened when I was in the fifth grade or something, now I'm 22 and studying at the university. I came home from school in the evening, and my mother was in the kitchen cooking some dinner. When you entered the house from the front door, we had a corridor straight forward that was leading to the living room. To the right was the kitchen, and to the left were the stairs that led up to the second floor. Well, my mom was in the kitchen cooking some dinner, and I wanted to help her. I entered the kitchen, and while I was doing that, I looked to my right. In our kitchen at the time, we had a sideboard and, on the side of that, a box full of paper. When I looked at it, I saw a metallic looking orb. I've never seen it before. It looked like a cannonball or something, but it was brighter than a cannonball, but it wasn't shining or looking shiny. It didn't levitate or anything. It was just a dull looking orb. Anyhow, when I looked at it, the orb started rolling towards me and down in the box with papers. When it landed, the papers rustled. I started to look for the orb in the paper box, but I didn't find it. My mom looked as good when I told her what happened. She thought it was strange and didn't believe it was anything. Like I was seeing stuff. We didn't pay so much attention to it while we were eating. We had dinner for about 20 minutes or something, and after we were done, I went up the stairs to go to my room. When I stood in the doorway facing my room, I saw the same orb lying on my bed. I looked at it, and it looked like the first time I saw it. It rolled down from my bed, and I heard a bonk, like something heavy dropped on the floor, that started rolling towards me, I heard it wobble, wobble, wobble as it was rolling. It rolled past my feet, out in the hallway on the second floor, and down the stairs. I didn't get scared, and I did not follow it. Don't ask me why I didn't follow it, because I don't know why. I just entered my room, looking at the bed. I saw something heavy had been there because the sheets had markings. I know what I saw, but I don't know what to make of it. Like I said, I didn't get scared, but if I saw it today, I probably would. Me and my kids call it the Grim Reaper ghost. We've seen it several times over the years. The first time was probably around 2007. I was coming out of the bathroom in the middle of the night. We had a really small hallway with three doors, bathroom, master bedroom, and kids room, and a stair landing. I had gone peeing in the dark with the bathroom door open, so my eyes were used to the dark. As I went from the bathroom back into my bedroom, it was standing right there in that tiny hallway. I had to brush past it as I went into my room. It was really tall. I would say about 7 feet high. Like you described, it was blacker than black. The hallway was already quite dark, with a very little bit of light from the window in the bathroom, but I could clearly see that it was a tall, robed person. And their robes were moving as if the wind was blowing them. But there was no wind. I could feel the presence, but for some reason I wasn't scared. We had lived in that house for a few years at that time, with nothing very scary happening. I just walked past it and went to bed. I never told anyone about it. I saw it, or something similar, a year or so later. I was looking down the stairs again at night. I could see just the bottom of its robes, and they were moving. But this time, the robe was brown. The craziest time was quite a few years later. My younger son was in fifth grade. We were playing Monopoly in our dining room, a different house, in the middle of the day, a totally sunny room. I looked to my side and could suddenly see swirling black robes. It was only for a second, but it looked like it was floating a few feet off the ground. I didn't say a word because, honestly, I thought that it was just some weird sight anomaly of some sort. But at the same exact second, my son yelled out, there's a grim reaper ghost right beside you, floating. He could see the whole thing, and yeah, it was floating. He figured it to be about 7 feet tall. 
We had nine foot tall ceilings, and the hood was nearly touching the ceiling. My son has seen it way more than I have. He's seen it reflected on his computer screen, so he could tell that it was standing behind him. He's seen it walking into a bedroom. He doesn't even bother telling me anymore when he sees it, though I think he's gone a couple of years now without any sightings. He's in grade 9 now. I also have a friend who saw one in her house when she was young. Hers had a brown robe. She had had her dog recently die, so she thought that it had to do with her dog, or that perhaps it was even her dog's ghost. She actually chased it down her hallway and into her kitchen, only to see it disappear into a wall. With all of the sightings and no one dying or being worse for wear, I figure that Grim Reaper ghosts are totally harmless. I never felt any energy from them at all. So I live in a pretty old house, it's about 80 years old. The house beside me is actually the oldest house in my town. I believe it's over 200 years old, or at least close to it. I've never had any encounters in my house, but I do know something dwells inside, whether it's a spirit or something else. My first experience with it was when I was about 16. I remember being in my room watching TV, and then I was called to eat supper. So, I got up, went into the kitchen, fixed my food, and walked back into my room. But as soon as I opened the door to my room and took a few steps, I hit what felt like a wall, and I spilled my food everywhere. It knocked me back a little, but I was horrified to see that I literally ran into nothing I could see, but there was definitely something there that was invisible. I stood there, dazed and terrified. I couldn't move because I was too scared too, but I eventually stuck my hand out to see if it was still there, and there was nothing. So I cleaned everything up, went back, and got more food. I stuck my hand out in case it happened again, but it was fine, so I sat down and ate, and nothing happened again for a while. I never told anyone because it was so stupid that no one would believe me. My second encounter didn't happen for years and years later, but it was while I was sleeping. I was laying in bed trying to go to sleep when I heard what sounded like scratches coming from within my mattress. It didn't bother me, but it did confuse me because I thought it could be a mouse, but I wasn't sure how it got into my mattress. Then I began to hear it in the walls, which again didn't faze me. I just thought it was a mouse. As I was lying there, I felt a tug of the blanket above my head. I sleep with the blanket over my head, it just feels more comfortable to me. Still didn't faze me. I thought it was from the blowing of my fan, but then the next tug literally took the blanket off my head. I got out of bed fast as duck, turning my light on. I thought it was a mouse still, and it was pulling my blanket with its teeth or something. I looked everywhere, but I couldn't find anything, and the scratching stopped as well. I laid back down and fell right asleep, nothing ever happened again. I'm not sure what it is or what it wants, but I believe it likes to mess with me every once in a blue moon, and honestly, that's completely fine with me as long as it never gets worse. In the house my family used to live in, there was some sort of entity that could shapeshift, look, and mimic people or animals. The first encounter happened in late 2019, after we had already lived in the house for well over a decade. I was in bed with my girlfriend. We hadn't yet fallen asleep that night, and I was getting out of bed to go to the toilet before going to sleep. On the way out, I turned off the light. When I returned and opened the door, she called out and asked who was coming in. I responded that it was obviously me, and she screamed, so I turned on the light. She was freaking out, so I asked her what was going on. She said that a couple of minutes before I got back, someone, who she presumed was me, had entered the room, got into bed, and started cuddling up to her. When I actually came back and she realized that she wasn't lying next to me, she moved as far away as possible, but when I turned the light on, no one was in the room besides us. She said it felt just like me cuddling up to her. We ended up staying at her place that night, and she refused to ever come back. The next incident happened on July 11, 2020, I looked up the date of a football game that was on. I was watching the TV by myself when my dad opened the door and stood in the doorway. I wasn't paying much attention to him and absentmindedly asked him if he ended up watching the end of the game his team was playing in, they had made a pretty good comeback. He didn't respond, so I looked over at him and noticed that he was wearing one of my shirts, which was weird because it's not something he had ever done before. I then looked down and noticed that both of his legs were there. He had a leg amputated in 2017. Normally, he'd have a fake leg, one that is basically just a metal pole with a foot on the end, not one you could mistake for an actual leg. I must have had a serious look of shock on my face, because right after looking at his legs and noticing what was wrong, he backed away and slammed the door. I ran down to the back shed where my dad was earlier and found him there. I asked if he had just been in the house. He said he hadn't left the shed in hours. I didn't want to tell him what happened, so I just said I thought I had heard him calling. I found the shirt dad was wearing on my floor along with a bunch of other dirty clothes. 
The next case also involves the mimic pretending to be a dad. Dad is diabetic and will occasionally have a hypo, where he becomes non-responsive, and it can sort of be like talking to a child who will hardly respond and doesn't know where they are or what's going on. Mum found him sitting on the couch, and he wouldn't respond to her when she talked or nudged him, so she worried that he was having a hypo. She went out to the kitchen to get insulin, but when she returned, he wasn't on the couch. She then freaked out because she couldn't find him. After searching for a few minutes, she tried calling him, hoping that his phone was on him and she'd be able to hear it. Dad answered his phone. He'd been at work the whole time. The last encounter we had was a couple of months ago, about a week after our dog had passed away, she was old, I don't think the mimic caused it, if you were wondering. We were in the kitchen, from where you can see down the hallway. Leading off the hallway is another short hallway part, with a door on the end where our dog's doggy door is. We heard the doggy door open, which was strange as we only had one pet. We looked down the hall and saw what looked exactly like our dog. Mum was beside herself with fright and said, now it looks like Molly, our dog. I was scared too, but I aggressively said to it, we know you're not her, she's dead. Duck off. Then it made a horrifying noise, it sounded like a cat who had had its tail stomped on. It then bolted out of sight and through the doggy door. Mum and dad decided that they wanted to move, so luckily we were able to move out about a month ago. I haven't seen anything out of the ordinary since that last incident, so I'm hoping it was attached more to the house than us. When I was younger, we had this family friend named Joe. We called him Debbie Nick. He was awesome, like one of those uncles who would spoil the shit out of you. He became sick one day and passed away when I was at school. I was in maybe grade 5 or 6, so I didn't really know what was going on at the time. He was diabetic, like my dad, but Joe's was worse. One of the last times I saw him was at my parents' place. I just got home from school. He was pale and seemed drowsy. Silent. My dad told me he was sick and that he had something for me. It was a $5 bill. Before I got home and started to become aware of Joe's condition, my dad told me that he was seeing people that weren't there. Like people that have already passed away, loved ones, just standing around in the living room. Present. His condition grew dire. He couldn't leave his house or even get up to leave his bed, but his wife, Naomi, was taking good care of him. She had told us a story about a few nights before his death. They had a horrifying experience. She gets ready for bed and falls asleep next to her husband. She eventually wakes up to someone screaming her name. The bed is empty. Naomi realizes that the screaming is coming from the front door, and it's Joe's voice. He is shouting the words, Naomi, get the duck out here and see this. She jumps out of bed as fast as she can, and she races towards the front door. As she's halfway, she can hear a glass smash, followed by these loud, heavy footsteps stomping off and down the front steps. She approaches the door, and Joe is shaking with this shocked expression, pointing off into the darkness. Naomi sees this shadowy figure bolting fast into the field, not too far from their house. She was chilled to the bone but was able to bring her husband back inside. It was peculiar, Joe was incapable of leaving his own bed. But he was able to somehow, in the middle of the night, make it to the front porch with a glass of water for fresh air, where he was met by whatever that thing was. He never told anyone what he had seen. The scary thing is, he passed away while standing in the same exact spot. Okay, so when I was 10 years old, I was living in my grandma's basement with my parents, a clean, nice basement. One day, I was getting ready for school. I ate, dressed up, and went to the bathroom to wash my face. We had a bowl-like sink in which you could see the whole room. I washed my face, and when I looked into the sink, I froze. In the reflection, I saw something standing behind me. It was a black figure looking directly at me. I was so terrified that I just stood there and panicked in my head. After like one minute, it slowly turned to the left, where the door was. Then it went to the door in slow motion, like when you slow down a video of a person walking. It left the bathroom, and I was still frozen in fear. After three minutes, I finally got the courage to move and left the bathroom. I checked the whole house and couldn't find that thing anywhere, I'm glad I couldn't. Of course, no one believed me, they blamed it on my imagination, but I know what I saw and that it really happened. I lived in a single wide trailer for a good portion of my life, 10-ish years, and in that time I had five encounters that stood out. The first was when I was around 10 years old. I was asleep in my bedroom when I woke up and felt like something was watching me. I looked up at my ceiling fan and saw a half-skeletal face staring back at me. I started screaming for my mother, who came running and asked me what was wrong. I told her to look at the fan, but she couldn't see anything. I refused to go into that room for weeks. The second was a couple months later. 
I was back in my bedroom, sitting on my bed, playing Game Boy, when I got the same feeling. This time, there was a partially see-through black smoke-like figure standing in my doorway. I was frozen in fear. All I could do was stare at this thing, and after what felt like an eternity, it just disappeared. As soon as it was gone, I ran out of my room. I didn't go back to that room for months. The third was when I was 13. I was watching a movie on our old TV, knobs for volume and channels and a button for power, when it suddenly turned off by itself. When I turned it back on, it was on a different channel. The fourth was about two hours after the third. I was sitting at my kitchen table when I heard the back door open and close, so I went to check it out. When I was almost to the door, it opened again, and I could see that no one was there. Then it slammed closed. I locked it and went back to the kitchen, but I sat so I could see the back door. It opened and closed by itself four more times within an hour. The fifth time was when I was 16. I was home alone watching TV when I heard a knock coming from the back door. I went to see who it was, but no one was there. I started walking back to the kitchen when I heard another louder knock coming from my bedroom, but again, no one was there. I was annoyed, so I punched the wall by my bedroom and said out loud, if anything is there, knock again, and it did. I said, you call that a knock? I punched the wall as hard as I could and said, that's a F. Knock. It knocked even louder, so I said, show me what you can really do, and it made a sound so loud it sounded like a bomb going off. I said, okay, you win, and I never heard or saw anything in that trailer after that. When I was growing up, my family lived in an old Victorian house that was full of weird noises and inexplicable occurrences. There were times when I would wake up in the middle of the night to see strange figures standing at the end of my bed. I would hear footsteps in the hallway when no one else was home. And there was one time when all of the pictures on the wall suddenly fell down for no reason. I always felt like the house was haunted, but my parents never believed me. After we moved out, I did some research and found out that there had been several deaths in the house over the years, including a little girl who had died in her sleep. I'm convinced that her spirit is still haunting the house. I would love to share my experiences, specifically about the house I grew up in, that my parents recently moved out of about six months ago. We built this house and were the first ones to ever live in it. Completely brand new, you would never think that a brand new house could be haunted, at least that's what I thought as a kid. I have heard footsteps and seen things move, turn on, and turn off on their own. Flickering lights, electricity malfunctions, shadow figures, and full-on apparitions. Above all, I never felt comfy in the house. I dreaded being there by myself, I never went into the basement, and I always felt like someone or something was watching me. I would always sleep with the lights on in my bedroom, and I would have a new encounter or experience on a weekly basis. My entire family had experiences, with my dad having the worst. Our neighborhood would get together for a few months to drink and hang out. One night, the neighbors across the street from us were pretty boozy and started to mention how they think their house is haunted. Everyone's faces went cold. Everyone had a story or something to share. One neighbor had found a totem buried in their backyard and had a priest come bless it. Years later, my dad got a new job at a local brewery as a tour guide right down the street, about a quarter mile from our neighborhood. Through training, he learned that the entire area was once an Indian burial ground. The grounds go for miles and miles, completely covering our neighborhood. I'm really not sure how or why no one else knew about this in our neighborhood. I have to wonder if the county tries to keep it under control so real estate sales in the area don't completely tank. This is one of the many paranormal events that happened in the house my family and I used to live in. We'd been living there for about a month, and one night, we all went out to eat for my little sibling's birthdays, twins, turning six or seven. Before we left, we put all the dogs in the house and locked all three of the doors, the one that went out of my bedroom, the door to the screened-in porch off the kitchen, and the front door. The windows were always locked for safety precautions. On our way out, we flipped on the front porch light and closed the gate. We left around 6 and got home around 9. The gate was still closed, everything was normal, but as we unlocked the gate and pulled up, we were immediately shocked. All of the dogs had gotten out of the house. My mom parks the car while my dad goes sprinting up the porch. I ran around to the back of the house to make sure there wasn't another car, fearing we were being robbed. There wasn't anything there. I walked back around to the front to find my parents visibly shaken. My dad told me, the door still locked. We stood there looking at the house, and my mom pointed out that the porch light wasn't on. We all remembered turning it on before we left. My dad and I left my mom and the kids outside while we went and checked the house. Dad unlocked the door, and the first thing we noticed when we stepped in was the smell. It smelled like straight up piss. I'll never forget it because it was so foul. 
he flipped the lights by the door on so we wouldn't be standing in the pitch black. It was evident that we hadn't been robbed. Mom's laptop was still sitting there on the table, the huge flat screen was still hanging over the fireplace, with a console beside it. We checked all of the doors, all of them were still locked. None of the windows had been opened, and the whole freaking house smelled like piss. I went upstairs to check their bedrooms. When reaching into the nook to flip the light on, something that felt like fingernails grazed my arm. I lurched forward and got the light on. Nothing was there, but I could have sworn something touched me. After turning the lights upstairs on, I made my way downstairs. I remember standing on the bottom step when I heard my mom yell, Matt. The dogs. I'll never forget the scene outside. Every one of the dogs was on the ground, legs sticking out, all gasping for air, hyperventilating. My mind immediately jumped to dehydration, but it was winter, and dogs don't pass out from dehydration in three hours. We even kept a bowl of water on the screen porch at all times. The dogs could always get back there when they were outside because one of the screens on the door was broken. It's like they all just had panic attacks at the same time. We got the dogs to calm down, check them for injuries, and then just kind of brushed it off. None of us wanted to talk about how they got out, we just took everyone inside, and everyone was sent off to bed. The oldest and smallest dog, Holly, slept with me in my room. French doors led to the back porch, and because we'd moved in recently, I hadn't put any curtains on them. I kept the back porch light on that night, but it still creeped out. In the middle of the night, Holly woke me up. I sat up to find her staring out the back door, breathing very heavily. I went to walk over and see if anything was actually out there, but when I got up, the light went out and something banged on the door. Of course, I freaked out. I picked the dog up and went running out of the room, screaming bloody murder. After I explained to my dad what happened, he told me to just sleep in the living room. There was no evidence of the disturbance the next morning. There are many stories about my mom's childhood house, the house was passed down to her from my grandparents, from when she lived there with all her siblings and other family members. The last time I visited there was when I was three years old, so now as an adult, my husband and two daughters have visited. Both my husband and I were scared to stay in the house because of all the stories we've been told, but what could we do? My mom and aunt take turns taking care of my grandpa, who is 101 years old, and on this day that my story takes place, it was my mom's turn to watch grandpa. We were all in the kitchen having lunch, and my grandpa and daughters, who were almost two at the time, were right outside in the courtyard. The girls were playing, and my grandpa was taking in the sun, trying to stay warm. As we were inside talking, we noticed the girls were about to come inside, but then we heard a voice say something, and the girls stopped walking towards us and went back outside and started talking gibberish and playing. My mom and I looked at each other, like, huh? The voice sounded male and sounded like a young person, no way could it have been my grandpa, he's 101, and he has a deep grandpa voice. We all heard it, my mom even went outside to see if maybe a neighbor was talking to them, but no, it was just my grandpa and daughters outside. The house is old, and so is the land it's built on. Well, the land the whole town is built on is ancient. It used to be Aztec slash Teotihuacan territory. I know of at least one person who has died at the house, my great-great-grandma when my mom was a teen. We don't know what the voice said, we just know it was male and young. My mom tried to play it off, but we all heard and knew what happened. She doesn't like talking about it, and nowadays she says that her house isn't haunted because if she talks about it, it would only make her scared of living in her own home. This is the only scary or weird thing that happened to my daughters. I was actually really scared of something scarier happening with them there, but, thankfully, nothing else. So last night around 1am, I got done watching Netflix and went to sleep in my basement, where I normally sleep. I had an uneasy feeling like I was being watched, but as I normally do in my basement, I just don't pay any mind to it. I lay down on my side to go to sleep, and I fall asleep. Around an hour later, I hear voices. For some reason, I thought it was the TV because I didn't want to open my eyes to look out of laziness. Then I hear the door open and footsteps down the steps. The voices stop, and someone comes over and touches my thigh and, in a masculine voice, says, good, you're still here, and walks over to my computer room. At the time, I thought it was my dad, but I felt so tired that I couldn't say anything and was really scared. Finally. I kind of snap out of it, look at the TV, and realize I didn't turn on the TV before I went to sleep. I look over to the computer room, and a blue light is coming for it. I calmly put on my glasses, grabbed my phone, turned on the lights, and looked in the computer room. Nothing was turned on that could give off a blue light, so I got the hell out of the basement. I'm a cat mom. I love cats. I have three inside cats, and a few stray cats have taken up residency in our yard. 
They guard this yard with their lives, come hell or high water? My boy cat that's typically back and forth outside, Orion, went outside yesterday morning and has just been chilling with this female cat, Sheba, she's an outside cat. So, I was cooking earlier and had a small piece of steak left over. I usually mince it to give it to Artemis, Persephone, and Orion. Orion hadn't come inside, mom's in the living room watching TV, so I go outside to call for him to come, but I don't see him. Assume he's somewhere chilling, and I go back inside. Wait a few hours, and I go back outside to see if he's out there, but he's not. Since my neighbors are outside, I decided to head out to see if Orion is underneath this van we have in the yard. I don't get the chance to, because as I'm calling his name, I hear something sounding like a wounded cat. I immediately think it's Orion, and I start calling his name, and the cat keeps responding. But the meow isn't like a normal meow, I could tell something was off. My mom came outside to check on me, and it just completely stopped. Me and her both call for Orion, the cat isn't responding anymore. It's almost like it's watching and observing. It sent chills down my spine, honestly. I wasn't scared or sensed any malicious intent, but I could tell something was watching both of us. I took this time to go check for Orion under the van, and he's there. He hasn't moved since earlier that day, when he was under there staring at this area of trees around our house. I call his name, his ear folds back a little bit, and he adjusts around but is still staring at this woodland area. Sheba and Tony, two of the stray cats that have taken up residence outside, are lying out in the yard. I shake a small bag of cat food to lure Orion out so I can bring him inside, he still doesn't budge and just stares at the trees. I decide to head back in at this time and get this sense that I'm definitely being watched now. Sheba, Tony, and Orion are now all under the van, staring at the trees. This SHT is weird to me. I don't know what the duck is going on, but I do not want to see this thing up close and personal, and I'd like it to duck all the way off. Okay, so we've all heard of hauntings and such, but has anyone ever heard of house ghouls? I've had some weird occurrences in my life and just want to know if anyone has seen or heard of them. I called them house ghouls, but I don't know what they're actually called. Some say they are the reasons for arguments and disruptions inside the home, and can be brought in by messing with certain doors you can't close. They lurk inside your homes, undetected by the naked eye. They live inside the cracks and walls of your home, mainly crawl spaces, attics, or basements. I am not sure if they are supernatural beings or not, but I once encountered them. Me and the neighbor's house were maybe 80 or 100 feet away. When I lived in South Jersey, near Vineland, the neighbors weren't what you would call quiet neighbors, they had the county police out there a couple times, mainly domestic calls for their adult son from within the home. He may have autism or some other type of learning or developmental disability because he would lash out in anger sometimes in the household. It was just the father and the mother, with their son residing there. One night, the ambulance and police came out to the house, and they brought the son out of the house on a stretcher, screaming pennies or something. It looked like visible blood, but I really couldn't see anything due to the glare of the police lights and EMS strobes lighting up the area. His mother was also taken to the hospital, and his father stayed at the home. A day or two later, no one was at the home, and it looks like they moved out, it seems like they just went up and left. We're in a little small town also, so I would think somebody would have seen somebody leave. I was able to cure my intense curiosity because a buddy of mine I went to high school with was an EMT that night at the house, and I was able to catch him at the local bar. Sitting at the bar, I go up and ask him, Oscar, what the hell happened that night? He calmly looks at me with a humph and grin, then responds, crazy shit. He told me that he snapped, took a paring knife, stabbed his mother in the neck, then went after the old man. He, the father, was able to shove his son inside a closet and lock the door until police arrived. While inside the closet, the son then started a bellowing scream, almost like a howl. When the police opened the door, he took the paring knife and stabbed all inside his navel, then gouged his right eye out. He screamed penance the whole way out of the house and all the way to the hospital. I then said, wow, do you think he just snapped? My friend then said, nah, it's definitely the house. I then chuckled it off. The exact same night later on, I saw what looked like people at home. There was discarded furniture at the end of the lawn for trash couches, tables, chairs, and other things I assume were clothes inside of black trash bags. It's not uncommon for people to search through trash or furniture, though. So as I was going to look away, I noticed these things were like little elderly people. Hunched over very skinny bodies and protruding round bellies. It seems like their balding has just very thin strands of cotton-like hair illuminated by the dimming garage light. I go out to take a look further, and I see two of them rummaging about the trash. One of them then goes around to the side of the house, no more than 4 feet 4 inches tall, stocky build, 
and skin like a pale sweaty hide. His arms were short at the shoulder and long at the elbows. He also walks with a hobble, disgustingly snorting in the air as he walks. The other was a bit taller, maybe around 5 feet 11 inches with short arms, long fingers, and long skinny legs, but walked hunched over if he stood straight up, maybe around 7 feet 1 inch. Both have very deep eye sockets, you can barely see any eyes. In total disbelief at what I'm seeing, I had to wake my wife up and show her. She then went and made salt water, said an African orichas prayer, opened the door, poured the water on our doorstep and porch, and closed it. We then watched the things try to get back inside the empty home, but they were gone. I then find out that a lady lived there way before I was born, and she charged people to do seance. She was a medium. Needless to say, I don't live around there anymore. I was taught that ghosts weren't real. My mother and father laughed off any mention of the paranormal and called people who believed crazy. I was proud to be the kid in my friend group who wasn't afraid of ghosts or spooky stories. It never crossed my mind that they could be true because everything had an explanation. We moved into an old Victorian house in the PNW in the early 2000s. The house had been built over a hundred years ago in a small lumber town. It was beautiful and a fixer-upper. It had a real crystal chandelier, stained glass windows, a dilapidated claw foot tub in the basement, and was falling apart in places. My parents were determined to patch it up over time. One place they never got around to was the basement. Being down there gave you the feeling that it hadn't changed much since the house was first built a century ago. Welcoming is not a word I would use to describe it. There was always a sense of being watched. It was dark and dingy. The only light was a single, bare bulb in the support beams. Not even the adults could stand being down there for long. I caught my mom running up the basement stairs a few times and quickly shutting the door behind her, like something scared her. When I asked what was wrong, she would pretend she was fine. I would learn years later that both of my parents were terrified of the basement without being able to pinpoint why. It became a storage space. Odd things happened in the house that I made up reasons for. My little brother and I's doors faced each other on the second floor. One night, we both heard a shrieking sound outside our doors, like a woman was being killed in the hallway. We opened our doors at the same time and confirmed that we both heard it. I told him it was probably just cats fighting outside. I went back to bed, where I tried to convince myself it was just cats. Except, why would the sounds come from the hall and not from outside our windows? We didn't have pets either. Another night, I was staying up past my bedtime to read under the covers with a flashlight. My bed began to shake violently. I thought it was an earthquake. I had already been through one that was 6.8 magnitude, so I held on and waited it out. When it subsided, I ran to the living room, where my father was. I asked if he felt the earthquake. He hadn't felt a thing. That was concerning, so I pressed him. He told me it must have been a large truck passing by. So I returned to my room and tried to convince myself that's all it was. The incident that I could not explain happened shortly before we moved out. I was asked to retrieve something from the basement for my mother. I begrudgingly obliged, it still gave me the creeps. So I went down pretending to not feel the oppressive energy that hung over the room. As I was searching through a box, I felt an overwhelming sensation that something was telling me to look up. It felt important. So I did. My eyes went up to a shelf across the room. There was a row of large spools of ribbon my mother used for presents. They had sturdy, circular bases around 4 inches in diameter, if I had to estimate. It would take something more than wind or shaking from a large vehicle to do what I saw next. I will never forget this moment because it made me question my perception of reality for the first time in my life. It was dead quiet as I watched one of the spools slowly tip over onto its side and roll off the shelf. I could barely comprehend what I had just seen, and I wasn't going to find out if ghosts were real by sticking around. I flew up the stairs and took a walk to my friend's house. I told no one about it until I was in my 20s. I didn't think anyone would take me seriously. Surprisingly, all these years later, my parents believed me. There was something about that house. For most of my childhood, I believed ghosts were real. The reason I believed was because of the nightmares I had when I was younger. Nightmares that prevented me from going to the bathroom in the middle of the night, forced me to sleep with a light on constantly, and prevented me from looking down dark hallways and rooms on my way to bed. Truth be told, I didn't experience anything tangible to support my beliefs for a long time. Yet I still believed my house was haunted. Fast forward to age 13. I moved to a new city and into a much newer house. Nothing happened for several years, and my fears waned. I slept comfortably for years in one of the three rooms upstairs. Life events happened, and I was forced to switch rooms several times. I moved to another room upstairs, across the hall, and back again to my original room. 
Again, no experiences out of the ordinary. Nothing could have prepared me for my next move, to the middle of the basement, wide open. It started in high school, about the 10th grade. I slept underneath a window, the seating area, TV, bathroom, and other bedroom were across the big space to my left. A storage space was at the foot of my bed, two giant bookcases with a curtain between them, a fridge, and family heirlooms behind them. One early morning, I had my first experience. My alarm was set for 6 a.m. for Killer Queen. I was awoken to the song, but when I sat up, my best friend was dressed as Freddie Mercury at Live Aid, standing at the foot of my bed, singing. Only for a brief moment, I blinked, and he was gone. The alarm was going off. I laughed it off, it was just strange to me. Nothing happened again for several weeks. Another night, I was awoken to a chill. I opened my eyes to the dark basement. My eyes panned left, and a tall, black shadow quietly floated its way across the room, passing about five feet away parallel to my bedside before disappearing behind the bookcase at the foot of my bed. It was hauntingly peaceful and quiet, but the image was vivid. It actually didn't scare me, I slept peacefully after. But whatever was trying to communicate with me saved its most disturbing and sinister for last. Several months later, my room orientation changed. I now slept where the seating area was, facing the window I slept underneath. The black shadow would have moved from right to left instead of left to right. It was December, and I wasn't feeling great. I ended up going to bed at 8 p.m. I was in a state of sleep where you're aware of things going on, but you kind of feel asleep, kind of in between. I had been in this state of sleep for two hours, fussing. Something in me told me to sit up. I turned over and sat up to see a moonlight white, decomposing face with hollowed out eyes about 12 inches away from my face. Its face is continuing to rot and disfigure. It was in a crawling position, just staring at me. My eyes darted left, and three more sat on the couch in front of me, all three sitting with one leg crossed over the other, their faces also white, rotting, twisting, and disfiguring. The phenomenon only lasted a few seconds, I blinked, and they were gone. I had curled up into the corner against the wall, panicking. I fumbled for the TV remote in the dark and turned on the TV to shed light. I didn't sleep down there for three days. And when I went back, I never slept comfortably. I ended up moving the bedroom to the basement and can't recall experiencing anything since. We've discounted any chemical leaks or environmental conditions causing these phenomena. No one else in the house has had any experiences except me. I still can't look into a dark room to this day. What could have caused these experiences? I used to own a house near the mountains on the north side of Colorado. I lived with my roommate at the time, but he went out to some club that night, leaving me alone with my dog. I hate to even think of this, and this is the first time I've ever told anyone besides my neighbors. It was around 8 p.m. on a Friday, and I was watching friends on TV. While watching, I heard what sounded like boxes shuffling around in the basement. My dog immediately noticed this and brought his head up. Our basement was almost finished, and we had a window down there that was in good shape, so I just brushed it off, thinking that the wind was making noises. After a while, the noise never stopped. I decided to grab my light and head down there with my dog. I grabbed my light from the kitchen and opened the door to the basement. I started walking down the stairs, calling my dog. The only thing odd was that my dog decided not to come down and was making those high-pitched noises dogs make when they are happy or whatever. He refused to go down in the basement and just stood at the top of the basement. To give you perspective on how my basement was laid out, all of my extra stuff from my childhood, like clothes and such, was on the back right corner, so when you walk down them on the very right, that is where that stuff is and all my roommate's stuff is right next to mine on the left, and there was a bench with all of the previous owner's stuff that they left there. So while going down there, the sound was still very clear and was getting louder and louder the farther I got in there. I saw the window open and making noises and decided to go close it. As soon as I closed it, it felt like a hand grabbed my leg. But it wasn't a normal hand, it was super hot. My legs were swooped back, and I fell down. All I can remember from this point on was my dog barking extremely loud. I then woke up and found myself in the closet of my roommate's bedroom. I walked down the stairs and looked at the time, and it was 3 o'clock, and my roommate was not back yet. I looked at the clock, grabbed my phone and dog, and ran outside the front door. I went over to the neighbors around a mile. I ran there with bare feet. I didn't have a car at the time, by the way. When I got to the neighbors, that I barely knew, I rang the doorbell extremely fast, and around a minute later, a man opened the door and asked why I was ringing his door this late at night and I could tell he was quite frustrated with me. I told him everything, 
and he said that the previous owners moved out because the husband of the house ended up hanging himself in the basement. We talked for a bit while I let my dog run around in the back. I told my roommate to not go home and come over to the neighbors. Around an hour later, he showed up, and we all just sat there and talked about what had happened. Around 10 in the morning, I headed back to my house with my roommate to find the sofa flipped, all the doors open, and the cabinets in the kitchen all open with dishes on the floor broken. I decided to go live with my sister and sell the house around two months later. To this day, I'm not sure what that was and haven't had any other experiences. By the way, something that I didn't tell you was that I just broke up with my girlfriend. I've heard that ghosts thrive off of bad energy or whatever. Ike, let me know what you guys think it was or how to explain it. Ever since I was a baby, I have lived and grown up at my grandma's house, except for a few years when my mother started dating somebody, but they eventually broke up. My grandma lives across a cemetery, and the cemetery is probably not even 100 yards away. The cemetery is separated from the trailer by a highway that is heavily used. One time in middle school, I was home alone during the summer break, and the house felt really weird. I was pretty uncomfortable and just had this unsettling feeling like I was being watched from the hallway, which is always dark. My mom's flat screen was put in the living room at the time our cable was off, which was direct TV, so I could only watch season DVDs of shows that I liked or movies. One day, I got so bored with watching TV that I turned it off. I looked at the reflection on the flat screen and saw a figure standing behind me behind the couch. There's a walkway that leads into the kitchen, and it was standing right in that walkway. I knew that it wasn't me because I could see myself on the couch, and it was separate, probably standing a yard behind where I was sitting. I froze, and I was full of fear, and I couldn't breathe. A few seconds later, I just got up and ran towards the front door. There have been other instances where I would hear footsteps in the house when I'm home alone, and I always feel like somebody would be watching me from the hallway where the rest of the bedrooms are apart from the master. A couple times my grandma's chandelier has started swinging back and forth subtly, and one time my mom got mad and started yelling at whatever was making it swing. Another time, I was smoking a joint with my little brother and my cousin outside of my grandma's house on her back porch around 2 a.m. We've all gotten used to the cemetery that's across the road at night, even though looking at it can be very depressing. Just knowing that is where I'll eventually end up someday. But anyways, one night when we were smoking at that joint, the town got really quiet, and that busy highway was actually pretty dead. It was during that time of night that people stopped passing through the town. My grandma lives right across the hospital, and that cemetery is linked to that hospital. There is a lit up sign for the hospital with a screen that shows community announcements and hospital announcements, and it lights up the driveway up to the hospital. This turned into the hospital compound, and the hospital signs are probably around 100 meters away from where we were. While we were smoking, we were looking around the area, but during that smoke, sesh, I looked at the driveway to the hospital from the road, and it's a downhill 200 meter drive to the hospital. Suddenly, I saw a tall, white, misty figure walking up to the cattle guard near the intersection of the highway and hospital. It was walking in a very inhumane way, it wasn't walking like a normal person would. It was walking, sort of like a machine, if that's a good way to describe it, with very stiff, sudden movements. The figure walked about 8 feet up the hill to the intersection, and it turned around and started sprinting down the hill to the hospital, and it was sprinting so fast, faster than any person would. When it was running down the hill, it was sort of gliding off the ground, and the way it was running was just inhumane. I immediately yelled, what the duck? And my brother and cousin reacted to the figure too. We all just watched it run down the hill and disappear into nothing. We were scared and immediately put the joint out and went back inside. My aunt's house is haunted. I am not inclined to believe in the paranormal, but certain things I've experienced there I just can't explain. One night after a family reunion, I was alone in the kitchen watching TV. My aunt and my mom were on the other side of the house, tending to my now deceased grandpa. Just the four of us in the house. And just as an addition, my grandpa was almost 95 at the time, couldn't walk by himself anymore, and was suffering from Alzheimer's, he barely even talked. Suddenly, someone called out to me from the living room. A deep male voice, loud enough to make me jolt. I'm not gonna lie, it scared me shitless, and I hurried over to my grandpa's room. Later, my cousins and the rest of my aunts came in, none of them had come earlier to the house. On another occasion, my mom and I were completely alone in the house. She was washing the dishes, and I was eating a sandwich. From the corner of my eye, I could see the kitchen's doorway and something like a shadow peeking in and out of the living room. I immediately told my mom, wanting to scare her, and as a good Mexican parent, she basically told me to duck off and not try to scare her anymore or else. I keep watching the shadow peek in, but I set myself to ignore it, 
and after a while, it stops. I tell my mom to settle her, because she really does get scared easily. As I stand up to clear the table, I see my mom jump and look at the kitchen door with her eyes wide. I'm startled too, and I ask what's up. Did you hear that? She asks me. Nope. What are you talking about? You know you said someone was peeking from the living room? I just heard a deep male voice call your name from there. I instantly flash back to last time. I feel very, very uneasy in that house. I literally cannot stand to be there alone, I have an instinct to run away. I've never heard my name again, not that I'm looking forward to it, but I've seen and heard other things, like stuff being out of place or hearing my grandpa's favorite couch rocking back and forth. Many years ago, my grandma bought an old chair at an antique store. We guess it's old enough to be from the Civil War era or World War II. The legs are somewhat carved with decorative features, it has a cushion that is mostly plain but probably pretty nice for its era, and the back is open with the support forming an oval loop. It's not extravagant by any means, but it's a nice old chair to have as a decorative piece to fill a room. Ever since she bought it, somewhat strange but almost always explainable things have happened, like hearing occasional footsteps. Eventually, the chair was stored in a shed they have, and it hasn't been touched for years. I had lived with them and never heard footsteps, and although I did have a couple odd things that are entire stories on their own, no one seemed to report any oddities like they had with the chair. As a child, I believed I saw the apparition of a Civil War soldier walking through the house but dismissed it as an overactive imagination until my brother was telling me he saw the same thing, and I showed him my notes I had written down of my experience as proof I wasn't making my side up to match his story. I had started to document all my experiences after I realized how many I had. I just got a call from my brother saying very quickly that the chair is back in the house and things have immediately started again. My brother was visiting my grandparents, and they had gotten onto the topic of scary movies. I have an uncle who lives there who hates scary movies, and he said recently he has been feeling watched. He then told the story of how, one morning, he woke up and couldn't move out of bed until he said a quick prayer under his breath. It is then brought up that, without his knowledge, the chair had been brought back and placed in the spare bedroom, where it used to set. My grandparents have also reported hearing footsteps going up and down their stairs when no one else is home. I am more of a scientist and am considering taking this chair to test with. However, as scientific as I try to be, the thought of whether it's real scares me for my dog's safety and my roommate's safety, and honestly, I have expensive things I would be devastated to lose if it changed from passive events to physical and moving stuff. It may sound silly, but I hope those fears show I really believe this enough that I consider the risks, no matter how small they may be. I think the Fae are stealing my things. The first experience was a little man I would see in my girlfriend's basement. Trinkets went missing or were moved down there, and we found a pair of eyes drawn into a spilled pile of glitter after we respectfully asked that anyone living in the basement move along and leave our things alone. I moved from New Jersey to Georgia shortly afterwards and briefly had things move around, but nothing was missing. I also thought I may have seen him in my new room, but I cannot be sure. The second experience was that I would hear pacing outside my bedroom window, and my crystals were being knocked down or moved without explanation. I also hear something call my name from outside the window just before sunrise, but when I tried to say duck off, leave me alone, I couldn't speak. Now to what I actually need advice with, three things have gone completely missing since I started seeing this little man, I can't be sure if he's related to the things happening outside my window and my moving crystals, but I think it's a reasonable assumption, three of my most treasured belongings have seemingly disappeared from the face of the earth. The first is a meteorite I found on the ground during one of the worst days of my life. I carried it with me every day after that, and I always felt at least marginally better when it was with me. Then I lost it, and my mental health went completely to shit this happened before I moved. My girlfriend and I searched her house over and over and were never able to find it. I know the last time I had it was in her house because the last time I remember having it, I was horribly sick, and she handed it to me to help calm me a little. I didn't leave her house for three days and couldn't find the meteorite the day after she handed it to me. The second is a flannel hoodie my sister gave me for Christmas. I wore it all last summer, it's very light material and the sleeves roll up easily, while walking through the woods. It had nice, big pockets that I used to carry my crystals around in. One day, it just vanished. I checked every room in my house and every vehicle my family owns. Gone. Finally, I have a black baseball hat that I embroidered myself with an anatomical heart. I have worn it almost every day for nearly four years. I look naked without it, and I'm always careful of where I put it. I cannot find it. The last time I wore it was last night. I rode with my mom to get food, we used a drive through so I never left the car. We tore apart both the house and the car and came up with nothing. 
all three of these items were special things I had with me almost every day, and I was careful to remember where I put them down. And all three have vanished without a trace. The strangest part is that my memory feels completely wiped when I try to think back to putting them down. I don't remember ever doing it, am I just losing it? Are the Fae taking my things, and if so, is there anything I can do to get them back? At least just the hat? To start, my house is off level, and I often have windows open, so a lot of things could be explained easily. I moved into a house a couple of years ago. I've always been super into the unknown, Lamau insert Elsa, and the paranormal, ghosts especially. I'm still a minor, and I live with my dad and switch over to my mom every other week, they got divorced. My dad struggles with money, but I do my best to help him. We can't move out of our house because of this money problem. The first day was creepy. I walked in and felt immediately unwelcome. It wasn't decorated, the house, and I thus let it go and thought that was why. My dad and his girlfriend decided to go to yoga, and I was like, okay, call, chill, I get to have some time alone? Anyway, after they leave, everything is surreal. I feel like I'm in a whole other world, and the feeling of deja vu is insane. I was at the top of the stairs watching videos, but I moved down because I heard whispering and hella footsteps. So, I naturally moved away from the sounds, as one should do. Now all I could hear were the footsteps, and I was hella scared still. It doesn't want me to just move away, it wants me out, I thought. I moved to the front door, that's a couple feet ahead of the stairs, and everything was eerily silent. I started going into a panic. I have anxiety, and being scared plus that little mental illness isn't a good combination. At this point, the feeling was overwhelming, and I was crying. Just then my dad gets home, and I run upstairs to put lotion on my face to make it look like I wasn't crying. It worked, and I said nothing of it. A couple months later, nothing really happened other than doors opening, slamming shut with a shitload of force, and my sweatshirt, that was in my hamper, was thrown from my room, all the way downstairs onto the couch. Me and my dad were wiped out by that one, but we went on with everything as normal nonetheless. A couple nights after that, I awakened to knocking on my bedroom door. I thought it was my dad for a mere second, then I looked at the clock, it was 3 AM, and I was like, oh, shit, polite robbers, so I just laid there, doing nothing. You see, my dad always knocks on my door while saying my name or scratches the door like a cat. As I was waiting, footsteps faded away. Then, this is the scariest part, I heard my name being whispered. At that point, I was trembling. I was in the corner of my bed, blankets wrapped around me, when something super distinct whispered my name, Lily, Lily, Lily. Then I stayed up the whole night, fearing being attacked. Another night, I heard something tell me to kill myself. I got an Ouija board and tried it with my friend, but she was manipulating it, making the ghost have a crush on me, which was really annoying, so I stopped playing with her. I know not to play alone, and I've never had the chance to play it seriously. Me and another one of my friends are extremely spiritually connected. I can tell when someone dies without being told anything about their death, and if it's a dog, the breed of the dog. She was sitting on my bed, and we were talking, you know, when my door slammed harder than ever before. We both look at each other and say, well, it doesn't like us. Recently, a week ago, I was cleaning my room. It had a Jack and Jill bathroom connected to it. The bathroom leads out to the hallway through the other door. Anyways, I was cleaning up my room after readjusting my bed frame and turning it to the side, and I heard a faint scraping sound. I come into the bathroom, and a cup I had placed in the corner of the counter has moved to the middle of the counter. I'd arrived just in time to see the end of the motion. So yeah. Welcome to my haunted house. Anyone know what is happening? I grew up in the 1990s in Minnesota. My parents divorced when I was eight, and we spent every other weekend at my dad's haunted house. This house had every type of ghost you could think of, a shadow man in a trench coat and brimmed hat, another separate shadow figure that danced down the hallway, a man dressed to go fishing, a doppelganger of my father, two giggling little girl ghosts, and many other unseen entities. The dishwasher, radios, and lights would turn themselves on and off randomly. Loud banging would be heard on walls and doors. Door handles would jiggle and turn on their own. Feelings of being touched or caressed in the shower were reported. My father also had an incident where he felt someone crawl into bed with him in the middle of the night when he was the only one home. My uncle reported hearing two little girls giggling and singing in the basement one night while sleeping downstairs. Upon awakening the next morning, he discovered there were no kids in the house that night. So who did he hear playing in the middle of the night? Also, there was a salamander plague one night. The entire yard was covered in slimy, slithering salamanders. It only ever happened once. 
I'm not positive if that is paranormal, but it's certainly strange. One sunny Saturday morning, while visiting my dad, my brother and I were up early watching cartoons. I was eight years old, and my brother was three. As we sat on the couch, we heard three alert knocking sounds on the wall five to six feet behind us. Knock, knock, knock. Our heads quickly snapped back to look at the wall where the sound was coming from, but we saw nothing. My brother and I quickly turned to look at each other with frightened eyes. I, being the older sister, tried to be brave. I told him it was nothing. As we turn our attention back to the cartoons, my little eight-year-old brain is spinning. What if that banging noise we just heard wasn't just the pipes, as I had been told so many times? What if it was a ghost? I hate when the ghosts come around. Why isn't my dad around whenever this happens? As these thoughts swirl in my head, we hear them again. Knock, knock, knock. This time it is coming from somewhere in the kitchen off to our left. It's not as loud as the first time, and the sound is different. It seems like someone is knocking on the kitchen counter this time instead of the wall. We quickly strain our necks to peek inside the kitchen with lightning speed to catch whomever or whatever is making that noise. Again, there is nothing there. I take a deep breath. Once again, I pretended to be brave and told my brother, it's nothing. Just ignore it. My heart is thumping in my chest, and there are butterflies in my tummy as the familiar anxiety grows worse with each passing second. I tuck myself up on the couch in a ball, not wanting my legs to dangle off the side. I no longer feel safe. Nothing is to be trusted. Knock, knock, knock. This time, the sound is coming from the dining room. I can tell the noise is coming from the wooden dining table this time. I can see the entire table from where I am sitting, and there is nothing on the table that should be making that noise. No one except me and my brother is awake. There is no one in the dining room. There is no logical reason for this knocking noise that is moving around us. Just then, I realize the knocking sounds have been moving in a big circle around us. If this invisible entity were to move any closer to us, the next logical place for it to be would be in the living room, where me and my brother are currently sitting. Knock would be on the coffee table, sitting less than a foot away. No sooner than that thought crossed my mind, it happened again. Knock, knock, knock. This time the noise was coming from the coffee table, which was less than one foot away from us. I instantly flip over the back of my couch in a reverse somersault-like motion and run at superhuman speed to my father's bedroom. In my panic, I completely left my little three-year-old brother behind to fend for himself. Luckily, he wasn't too far behind. We sneak into our father's room and quietly lay on the floor. Our dad would have been super pissed if we woke him up early on a Saturday morning, even for a ghost. In our commotion, we wake up our six-year-old sister, who is sleeping on our dad's floor. We three kids always slept on his floor together when we were visiting. We also used the bathroom together. That's how terrified of the ghosts we were. So we quietly whisper what just happened out in the living room to our sister. As we are telling her this story, something catches our eye. We can see a black shadow in the small space between the bottom of the door and the plush carpet. This black shadow is slowly pacing back and forth in the hallway, just on the other side of the bedroom door. Back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. Like this shadow is waiting for us. Unfortunately, I don't remember what happened after this point. Somehow, the rest of that memory has been lost with time. But I know for sure we didn't open that door. This happened three different times over maybe a five-year span at an apartment we lived in when I was in high school. First, my baby sister would come and visit when she was maybe three years old. My other sisters would babysit her. We have different moms, so it was the only time we really saw her. She would be sitting in a room talking to herself, which wasn't weird at first. Then she said her imaginary friend was mean to her, and she described what the little girl she talked to looked like. It was a little girl in a black dress with long black hair. Not too long after, her mom had a fight with my dad, so she stopped letting my sister come over, so we didn't see her for a few years. Then, about a year or so later, my other sister's boyfriend would bring his little sister over after school once in a while. This was a girl about eight years old who had never met my baby sister before, and one day we were all out in front of the apartment, and she looked up at the apartment above us and just froze in place. She turned white. She's a dark-skinned Latina girl. She always played around, joking and whatnot, and this was extremely weird behavior for her. We asked what was wrong. She said the little girl up the stairs was scary. Both apartments up the stairs were vacant and had been for a while. No one was up there, especially a little girl, and we didn't see the girl she was talking about. We asked her to describe the little girl, and she described the same thing my sister did. A little girl in a black dress with long black hair. 
that was when we started to wonder if the noises we would hear around the apartment were something paranormal. After that, my sister's boyfriend stopped bringing his sister because the little girl scared her. About two years after my niece, who had just moved back from living in California and was about three years old, was sitting in the bathroom with my sister while she was doing her hair, she said that the little girl scared her and was mean to her. My sister just asked, what little girl? My niece then described the same little girl, both my baby sister and my other sister's boyfriend's sister described it years earlier, and at the time, we were already used to the fact that that apartment might have been haunted. We ignored it for the most part, but things would happen all the time. My niece was never told about any of it because she was only a toddler, so why would we tell her about a little ghost girl that two other kids saw before her? It freaked us out, and before we moved, things got really weird. When I was younger, maybe 10 or 11, we lived in a very large old Victorian house. The house had five floors, very long hallways on each floor, and old wooden flooring. There were always creepy sounds at night and weird power outages, but that can be attributed to the age of the house. We liked the house a lot. The first incident happened in the attic. We called it the attic, but in reality, it had a family room, a bathroom, a kitchen, and a guest room. The third floor stairs have a landing that leads to the attic door, which takes you up a flight of stairs, and you come up to a long hallway on your left that leads you to the family room at the end of the hall, and a large window on your right that the moonlight comes through. When you enter the family room, there's a spiral staircase that takes you to the top floor, which is just a small, dark room that we never used except for storage. One night, I was playing with my toys on the stairs of the third floor, right next to the door that leads to the attic. We had a cat at the time. As I was playing, I heard scratching in the attic. Not wanting to get in trouble for her destroying a couch, I'm the one who asked for the cat, I opened the attic door and walked up the stairs to go find her. As soon as I reached the top of the stairs and turned down the long hallway, the scratching stopped and the power to the house went out, I was in total darkness. I put my back against the window, slid down, and stared down the long hallway, terrified and waiting for the power to come on. As I slid down, I heard a very slow thump thump, the sound of someone walking down the spiral staircase. The sound is unmistakable because the steps are made of metal. The sound continued, right behind the family room door, I heard each step. The steps stopped, the family room door moved slightly, and immediately I felt this rush come over me. I got so cold, and my heart started beating in such a way that I felt it actually move my chest. After a few seconds, the door bolted open, and something started sprinting down the hallway at me. I couldn't see a thing, but I felt the movement, that feeling you get when something is near you. I remember that was the first time I ever felt like prey. My heart was in my throat, but I screamed as loud as I could, and as soon as it got close to me, the rush went away and the cold left my body. My parents ran up the stairs, and after I told them what happened, they went to the breaker box and came up and looked all around and found no one, nothing but the handle on the family door in the room was broken, and the window behind me was cracked. It's possible I cracked it when I put my back to it to slide down, but it was cracked at a height I couldn't reach with my body at the time. The basement was the worst part of the house. It was one of those dreary, unfurnished concrete basements. It was as large as the first floor of a house, I mean, truly massive. When you open the door, the short stairs look like you're going into a cellar, and when you come down the stairs, you have to walk forward for several steps in the dark to find the string of the light and pull it. Even then, that light only illuminates the immediate area, not the rest of the basement. There are several lights like this the further you go, each one with a string to pull. To the left is the rest of the basement, it goes all the way back, and then there's a cove tucked to the left where the dogs sleep, it's out of their line of sight. Since there's a small window in the cove, it casts this bluish-black light in the morning and at night from the moon. One early morning, around 5 a.m., I had to go feed the dog since my dad was out of town. I hated when it was my turn because the basement always gave me terrible feelings. I would always call the dogs to meet me at the stairs so I didn't have to walk down the stairs in the dark alone. I called for them, waited, and called again. They didn't come, and I heard no sound. I walked down the stairs in the dark and held my hand out to find the string to pull out the light. As I reached for the light, I saw a movement at the end of the basement near the cove, and my breath got caught in my chest. I pulled the light fast, and the bulb popped with a quick burst of light. In that moment, I saw a man standing at the end of the basement. He didn't disappear like in the movies, though, and I wish he had. In the dark, with a sliver of moonlight from the cove window, I could still see him standing there with his back to me. He didn't move at all, and his head was cocked to the left in such an unnatural way, at an angle where his neck had to be broken. He was probably 40 feet away from me. As I stood there, trying to force a scream through my throat that felt like it was locked up, 
I couldn't look away, and in those few seconds I stared, I saw it was less of a man and more of a thing. It had white, translucent skin and looked gangly. I pissed myself standing up, I lost all control. I think the pee snapped me out of it because, as I felt the warmth on my leg, I started backing away, and as I backed away, it sprinted to the left towards the cove where the dogs were, and I ran upstairs. I chipped my tooth falling into the stairs, still chipped to this day. I slammed the door shut and locked the latch. I called my mom down, and we called to the dogs from the top of the stairs. No response. We went down there, and both dogs were huddled together in the corner of the cove, and it took five minutes to get them to leave the corner and come upstairs with us. We had to pull them apart and walk them with us holding their collars. The last one is short and simple, but probably the worst experience I had in that house. In that same basement, there's a furnace room to the left of the stairs, about 15 feet away from the stairs. It is dark, cramped, and has all kinds of luggage and extra supplies in it. The day before Thanksgiving, we were preparing for family to arrive. My mother sent me to get the Thanksgiving table decor, or whatever it was called. As I walked down the stairs, I saw the furnace room door was cracked. I stopped dead in my tracks, that door was never left open, and we were always told to close it so the dogs wouldn't go in it. Really, my parents made a big deal about it. I stayed on the stairs and stared at the door. I felt the hair on my neck raise and my fists clench out of instinct. As I stare, in the crack of the door I see half a smile in one eye. The smile was so close to being human, but so far, I can't explain it. It was as though something had been observing humans to mimic them but couldn't get its face just right. As I ran up the stairs, I heard the creak of the furnace door opening further. I slammed and locked the door, and that was the last time I ever went in the basement. From that point on, my parents never made me go back to the basement again and delegated my basement chores to my siblings. Even though I know that they didn't believe me, it was a nice gesture that I was thankful for. Since we moved, I have never experienced anything abnormal in our houses. I'm 26 now, and I have never had any issues with the paranormal since then. I like to rationalize by telling myself it was fear and my brain playing tricks on me, but part of me knows it wasn't. I have never had a paranormal experience, so I've always erred on the side of skepticism. I just started to dog sit regularly, overnight stays, and have stayed in three homes so far with no issues. I don't ever get scared on my own at night, and especially not when I have dogs with me. I also never have problems getting to sleep or staying asleep, even in places that are new to me. However, this stay was different from the jump. Typically, I get 8 to 10 hours, but the first night I only got, at most, 4. So far, I've always slept on the couch with a dim light nearby, so I don't run into stuff if I have to use the bathroom in the middle of the night. I settle in around 9 pm this night because the dog I'm sitting with is a puppy, and the owner told me that's when he gets sleepy. I put my headphones in and settle in to watch a few episodes of Misfits until I'm tired enough to turn in. The dog lays down to sleep on my legs. Everything is typical of every house sitting experience I've had so far. The only thing I'm not used to is that this house has a walkway on the second floor looking down into the room I am sleeping in. I'm fine, though. Like I said, I don't get scared. I go to sleep around midnight. The issues this night arose when the dog woke me several times, barking at nothing. Each time this would happen, I'd settle him again, blame it on him sleeping in a different area and not being used to it, and go back to sleep. It took longer each time but I did it. Only then did it get to the point that every time I was on the cusp of sleep, he'd bark or start growling. Finally, I managed to fall asleep, probably around 3.30, only to wake up at 6.30 to the sound of voices talking, sounding like they were in the kitchen, the room over. My initial thought was that it was the owners using the furbo, like a baby monitor but for dogs, that's in there with the crate, because it sounded like it came from the same area. That didn't make sense, though, because the dog was with me and it was 6.30 in the morning, so I called it an auditory hallucination from lack of sleep and moved on. He's a pretty big puppy, a Vishla, 45 pounds at 6 months, so I'm thinking maybe he needs more space on the couch. I switched to the pullout the second night. I also dimmed the lights in the kitchen to max, but it's the same shit. Go to sleep at 12.30, more on the edge today. Start clocking noises that I wasn't paying attention to yesterday. Sometimes, it sounds like shuffling on the carpet on the second floor. Sometimes it's taps coming from the kitchen that I never hear during the day. I spend a significant amount of time squinting up at the darkened walkway, but I don't see anything. It just sort of feels like something's up there. The dog still barks sporadically, sometimes jerking awake because of it. I think I get like 3 hours. Wake up again at 6.30 to voices, but they're closer this time, sounding like they're in the same room. I'm like, okay, 
I definitely need more sleep if I'm having another auditory hallucination, so I drive home that day to nap for a few hours. I feel like I have to clarify at this point, auditory hallucinations when just waking up are rare to me, I've had them maybe five times before this in my life that I can remember. So, as much as I'm trying to gloss over it, it's weird. Third night, which was yesterday, I'm like, okay. It's probably just all in your head. Still, I keep the kitchen lights on max, and this time I turn on the lights above the walkway. I get to sleep at 12.30, then I'm startled awake two hours later when the dog freaks out, starts barking and growling, and faces towards the foyer, on the other side of the staircase leading up to the walkway. He then does something he's never done before and runs into the foyer to see if something's there. I'm sitting there with my ears perked and my phone in one hand, wondering if I should call the police. But I don't hear anything, and he comes back 30 seconds later, standing on the pullout next to me and staring at the same place he was earlier. I am officially spooked at this point. I'm still hearing shit I still feel like something's watching me. I start counting the taps in the kitchen, and it's always three sets of three, which is comforting at first because I think it's an appliance, except then I realize that I'm pretty sure that's a thing in supernatural shit and not a good thing. I get back to sleep at 5.30 am. This time, I'm not woken up at 6.30 by voices. Instead, at 7.30, a woman whispers my name directly into my ear, clear as ducking day. I don't know if it's significant or if this happens in auditory hallucinations as well, but this time it's only audible in my exposed ear since I'm sleeping on my side. Regardless, at this point, I'm done. I feed the dog, let him out, put him in his cage, drive home, and sleep for four more hours. It's the fourth night now, and it's currently midnight while I write this. I'm still hearing shit around me even while I'm sitting here in the kitchen with a shitton of lights turned on. Sometimes I feel like I see things moving in my peripherals. I kind of feel like I'm going crazy, to be honest, so I just kind of wanted to vent here. Maybe someone could either assuage my fears or confirm them. I had a supernatural encounter the other day at home that left me feeling spooked and wondering if anyone has had a similar experience. It was a typical lazy weekend morning. My girlfriend and I had stayed up late fixing my computer, and we ended up sleeping in. As I headed to the kitchen to grab a towel for a shower, I noticed that one of my parents' cars was gone and assumed that they had gone out for the day. We have two small dogs that I could see outside, but they had no way of getting inside unless someone let them in. As I was getting dressed after a shower in the bathroom, I heard my parents' bedroom door open forcefully and the sound of bare feet running on the tiles outside the bathroom. The footsteps ran to the dressing room, which is across from the bathroom door, and the door slammed shut. I assumed that my mother had slept in and was in a hurry to get dressed. I opened the dressing room door, expecting to see her at the dressing table, but the room was empty. I was shocked, and my next thought was that my girlfriend might have gotten up. I asked her if she had heard someone go into the dressing room, and she said yes. But when I told her that no one was there, she was equally surprised. We had a quick walk around the house, but there was no one there. The dogs were still outside, and it couldn't have been them. The windows were also all closed, as it's still quite cold here. About 10 minutes later, my parents arrived home from their swim, which they had done before we had even woken up. I told them what had happened, and they confirmed that it wasn't them. Just to clarify, we felt an energy in the house before, but it has never made itself known like this. I'm still feeling spooked by the experience and wondering if anyone has any idea of what it could be. Have you had a similar encounter? Any thoughts or advice would be appreciated. This was a few years ago. I had come home from school, and the rest of my family wasn't home yet. I felt like someone was watching me and was constantly looking into the corner of my eye. I had grabbed a snack and watched videos to try to get my mind off of it. A bit later, I swear, I heard the basement door open, and I didn't know why they were coming in from there, but I didn't think too much of it. That door leads from our garage to inside our house, and after the incident, I found out the garage door had been closed the whole time, so nobody could have gotten into the garage and into our house. I yelled out but didn't get an answer. I then heard my parents' voices from downstairs. This wasn't an intruder, no one could have gotten inside, and this was for sure my parents' voices. I didn't get a we're home. Or anything. But it didn't sound exactly like them, it sounded like them, but it sounded more spirited. Over the next while, I continued to hear their voices but couldn't make out what they were saying. Around 25 minutes later, my family arrived home through the front door. It was odd, but I didn't feel threatened, and it wasn't anything urgent to call a paranormal investigator for. To this day, I have no explanation for what happened. So this happened to me 8 years ago, and I can only just come to terms with it. When I was 13 or 14, my dad met this local woman, let's call her Jan. 
they quickly became close and bought this house, which was built in the late 1880s. It was located in a really nice area, which was, by all means, a local, quintessential English town. But something was wrong. The house was in perfect condition, had a large extension built onto one side, and had a large garden with a pond at the bottom of it. There were original features throughout the house, and it was definitely underpriced for the size and condition of it. The owners seemed very eager to sell it, and my dad and Jan were equally eager to buy it. I remember the day we moved in, and the odd happenings began almost immediately. We had all been unpacking for hours and were tired, so we decided to go out for dinner. Before we did, Jan had decided to put all of the moving in cards on the lounge windowsill. When we came home a few hours later, one of them had been moved and was upside down and facing out into the garden. It was the one from the previous owners. I instantly accused my dad of pulling a joke on me and Jan because that's the type of person he was, but when I saw the look on his face, I knew it wasn't him. He instantly started racing around the house and told us to wait near the door, thinking there was someone else there. That was the first encounter. Another thing you need to know is that Jan had two cats, one was really lazy and would only get up for fuss and food. The other was very playful and always wanted to be near you, no matter what you were doing. Just a few weeks after we moved in, Jan said she wanted a dog, and my dad did too, so they picked up a black lab from a local shelter. Almost as soon as they had adopted her, they noticed that the dog's behavior had changed. She had begun barking at the corner of the kitchen, near where an old fireplace was, which was now where the oven sat. The cats had become uneasy as well and had started spending more time out of the house, sometimes for days on end. But we all chalked it up to the move being stressful, there's something else you need to know. My dad is the most rational person I've ever met and, by all means, does not believe in the supernatural. Well, he didn't, then. I, on the other hand, have always felt like I had a strong sixth sense, like my mother. As a young teenager, I used to spend a lot of time alone in the house during holidays, as they both worked. I used to do lots of DIY crafts as a hobby, so for this, I needed a large table. The dining table was located in the large extension that was built by the last owners, who moved only six months later. Anyway, I digress. This room had three double radiators, and it was always freezing. Summer or winter, it didn't make a difference. Even if the rest of the house was toasty, that warmth never penetrated this room, even if the door was wide open. Whenever I would force myself to sit in there, I would always leave the door open as it looked out into the hall, and more importantly, the front door. I always felt so uneasy in that room. It was the type of atmosphere where you could feel the hairs on the back of your neck standing up. More than that, the animals refused to enter it, no matter if you coaxed them with food or toys, it didn't matter. As the months went by, I just convinced myself I was being paranoid, and my dad and Jan didn't really feel any way about the house, so I just tried to ignore it. That was all until this one week in December. As with most people in England, when it gets dark early, you tend to just snuggle up at night and watch TV, drink tea, and stay inside. For almost a week straight, I had heard my dad and Jan arguing in the kitchen, which was right under my bedroom, the old part of the house. I knew they had become snappy with work and money pressures, so I just didn't bring it up. Until one day I told them at breakfast, as Jan could see something was wrong with how moody I had been. When I told them, I was met with complete confusion. They told me they had been watching movies every night and had fallen asleep on the sofa. I didn't believe them. I thought that was just an innocent lie to comfort me. So that night, when the arguing started again, I ran down the stairs and barged into the kitchen. It was dark, and nobody was there. I heard them walking up behind me. My dad told me to go back to bed and stop being silly, but I know what I heard. So I begrudgingly went back to bed. Later in the night, I woke up to the feeling of someone sitting behind me on the bed. I knew my dad didn't sleep well at night due to his sleep apnea, but then I felt someone was braiding my hair. Trying to be logical, I thought maybe it was Jan, so I rolled over to see who it was, and nobody was there. The door was closed. I just screamed. They both came running, and I was trying to tell them through tears and me hyperventilating, they eventually said they believed me once I showed them the braid. My dad acted like he didn't believe me, but I know he did, his face was white. That was the breaking point for me. I said I wasn't living in this house, and I wanted to stay with my grandparents, so they agreed. I spent a few weeks with my grandparents but felt bad for my dad, so I went back, hoping it would be a fresh start. It wasn't. I was at the bottom of the garden one day, where the pond was. It was naturally formed by a small river that cut through. The dog was with me, and we were playing with the frogs in the pond. The next second, the dog starts growling, not just a normal growl. I've never heard anything as deep come out of an animal. It was like a car engine starting up. I turned around quickly and got up. 
I couldn't see anyone in the garden, but I didn't want to wait to find out, so I turned around to run back to the house. I had to drag her by the collar to get her back to the house with me. As I was just a few steps away, something pushed me, and I tripped, scuffing my leg on the way into the kitchen. I was done, completely done. I decided to look up the house online. I knew I wasn't going crazy now, not when something had literally pushed me. After a lot of searching on multiple record pages, I found the truth. So here it is. Almost 30 years after the house was first built, a husband and wife moved in, she was pregnant, and they had a child, a young boy named Oscar. Just a few years later, their son drowned in the pond at the bottom of the garden. In grief, the wife committed suicide, and the husband remarried and moved out. The house was abandoned for a few years before a new couple moved in. They desperately wanted to start a family, and after years of trying, she got pregnant, only to deliver a stillborn baby. Since then, the house has changed ownership over a dozen times, that I could find after weeks of searching and some very awkward phone calls. So I believe that the person who braided my hair was the mother who committed suicide, and I believe the ghost of the young boy was what the dog kept barking at, but I don't know what it was that pushed me, and I don't want to find out. I wish that was where this story ended. Up until this point, I had experienced most of the paranormal activity. I'm not sure if it was because I was young and just noticed it more. Anyway, when they bought the house, there was this white shed slash cabin thing on the side of the property. It was very run down and looked abandoned. As my dad and Jan had spent so much money on decorating the house, and with money being generally tight, they ignored this shed and thought nothing of it, all until my dad decided to do it up and use it as a bar. After a few days of working on the outside, he began working inside, tearing the floor up, painting, plastering, etc. The first day, he made a comment about how he kept feeling like someone was watching him. I didn't comment. Then one day, he asked me to help him out. We were painting the walls. It was a Sunday, and I remember because it was so quiet, no traffic at all. Let me start by saying that my dad, above all things, is not someone who forgets easily or misplaces things, but multiple times that day he forgot where he put the paint, the brushes, etc. until I realized that he wasn't forgetting, something was moving them. He realized as well but didn't comment, as he knew I was already shaky. We were almost done when I looked behind me to grab the paint and saw a dark shadow peeping at us from outside the window. I screamed. We both left immediately, and as we were running back to the back door of the house, I saw the same shadow was now inside the shed, looking out at us. We haven't spoken about it. But I know he makes a point of not going in there. Only a year later, they two moved out. Since I last saw the house, it's changed ownership multiple times, and I always feel bad for the new happy people who move in. Last year, I found out that one of the families had decided to redesign the kitchen and tear up the old wood floors. They found a grave under the house, between the kitchen and the new extension. I have had other experiences since then, but that house has to be the creepiest place I've lived. It was just constant little things, the longer we stayed, the scarier they got. I have no intention of going back.